I'm ready to read the best of the best books. So this is my third and final Goodreads Choice Awards video. The first one I read some nominees out of my comfort zone. The second one I read all 20 of the horror nominees. And in this one I'm going to be reading the winners. I am only doing fiction and since the debut won another category there will be 10 books that I'm reading. I think this is an interesting list and I actually was really interested in reading almost all of these books already. So I'm really excited to get to these. I have already read three of them so I will talk to you about those throughout the video. I'm going to be going in order of the categories as they have them. So I will be starting with the fiction pick, Yellowface. <laughs> 36% to yellow face and uh, but in a good way <laughs> I can't uh, this mm, okay so we are following our main character June slash Juniper and she is a writer her debut was a flop but she's friends with uh, I forget her name I'm really sorry I'm bad with names who is an Asian American author who has had incredible success and is like one of the like authors to watch and has made so much money and all of this stuff and they're friends but not friends friends but like they really are only friends with each other they're celebrating some book related stuff and they're eating pancakes and Ava is that her name I don't think that's her name and then she chokes on pancakes and dies so then our main character steals her manuscript oh yeah that's what they're celebrating that she had just finished her first draft of a new book she doesn't talk about her books until the first edition is done so she initially just like takes the manuscript because um she had read a couple pages of it before the death and was like oh this is incredible and then she's like reading through it she's like you know i'm going to improve upon this and publish it as my own book which is a choice and this book very much focuses on Chinese issues because she was Chinese there's conversations obviously with like stealing somebody's work but also then June publishing a book that is not within her culture or anything she wouldn't get a sensitivity reader she is like <laughs> calling anybody that questions like her right to publish this book um, like calling them trolls and haters and all this stuff like trying to get her down and I'm like <laughs> she's texting other authors and like it's really frustrating as a reviewer also because like we are not writing reviews for the authors we're writing reviews and telling our reviews for other readers so like whenever they're acting like everything is a personal attack I'm like that's not what most people are doing but it also does come back come back to June like knowing that she did something wrong and feeling like every little thing is an attack on her and her character. It's a very compulsive read for me. I need to know if someone is going to discover what happened. June is saying that she got a lot of inspiration from her friend and that's a little bit of how she's getting away with like the style seeming like hers and all of this stuff and she's like well I rewrote a lot of it so it is mine it doesn't matter that it's a collab that people don't know about <sighs> I'm stressed I'm very stressed our main character like uh so that's all <laughs> I'm really enjoying it um, it's a short book and it reads very quickly and has a lot of really great discussions in it and um, I'm very stressed while reading it but like so invested I'm 70% into yellow face and oh my god I <laughs> this is like everything that's happening is making me so stressed because it's like so so cringy like the rationale behind things also the character that died her name is athena so sorry i couldn't remember that i'm so bad with names there was a lot of talk about social media playing a part in things like this and being called out on social media for things and our main character's reaction to all of that and then like a talking to athena's mom this woman needs help. Can you imagine stealing someone's book and then lying to their mom about it? I'm so stressed. <laughs> yeah. um, I know when Michelle read this, she was saying that it's like a train wreck that she can't look away from. And that is exactly how I feel. I feel like this is written so well. Um, I think there's a lot of really great discussions in it. And it's really interesting because we are watching our main character try to kind of rationalize everything that's happening even though she literally stole a manuscript 
from her friend that just died. I don't have a lot of like more details to give you but I think this is done really well. Um, it's also an interesting discussion because of some things I'll talk about later. I don't tend to love like general fiction so I am pleasantly surprised by this even though I've only heard good things. I have finished Yellow Face and this one is so tough. I think I'm gonna give it four and a half stars. I think the ending for me just I don't know what it was but I just wanted something slightly more different. I can't put my finger on it. I've seen a lot of people complaining about this being too much of RF Kwong's like self insert. I personally don't know anything about her but apparently she has a lot of similarities to the character of Athena which is interesting but like people say write what you know and I don't think there's any real issues with that. I think this had incredible discussions in it about the publishing industry in general and race within that. The character of June was, oh god, it was, she, it was a very compulsive read because she was awful but like didn't have bad intentions generally. So it's just really interesting to read a character that is so flawed but also like isn't really being malicious for the most part but like intentions are not always the thing that matters and it was just I think it was done really well I really liked her writing I'm surprised that I enjoy this as much as I did just because of the genre this is marketed as a little bit of a thriller which probably helped me enjoy it more if Arf Kwan writes another book in this genre I will not hesitate to pick it up there's just mm, I still don't know there's just something about the ending that I wanted it to be slightly different I don't know also this takes place in DC a lot which I don't live in DC but I live fairly close so it was interesting to hear them talk about things that like I'm familiar with which didn't like add to any like my enjoyment or anything but it's always a little bit fun when that happens I do not know if I will be picking up her fantasy books after this because they're terrifying but I really liked her writing I think this had such an interesting plot it kept my attention the whole time I like needed to get through it to find out what was happening and I'm really really glad I picked it up because I don't know if I would have without this video I have started Wayward this is the winner of the historical fiction one it also won debut so and this is the winner of two categories it's the only one I, th I think debut and then another one is really the only way it can be in multiple but I've made it seven percent in and I'm DNFing I cannot do this I do own this so I thought that I could like it this is following um three timelines 2019 16, 19, and 1942. Obviously, we're following different characters in these times, and they're all going through stuff. It is weaving together the stories of three extraordinary women across five centuries, a novel of female resilience, which I am all for, but the way this is written, I'm not liking it at all. I am struggling to pick it up every time I keep pausing the audiobook. Nothing that's happening is really keeping my attention, which is frustrating. Obviously, tons of people like this book, I just think it's too historical for me and the subject matter isn't keeping my attention enough for my personal taste to keep me reading despite the historical stuff. A lot of the books that I'm going to be reading are out of my comfort zone so me not continuing this book doesn't mean it's bad. It's just I didn't like the writing, I didn't like the plot, I didn't like any of the characters, like nothing that was happening made me want to read more. So I didn't expect to DNF any of these books especially not this early on, but why continue if I know I'm going to keep not enjoying it because I'm not liking the writing? So book two is a DNF. Not ideal, but tons of people love this A1 historical fiction and debut, but I'm ready to move on. So I've started The Housemaid's Secret. I think that's what it's called. This is the sequel to the Housemaid by Frida McFadden. This one is interesting to um, be on this list after reading Yellow Face because this author apparently plagiarizes a lot. I have only read The Housemaid and I have not read any of the books that it is said to be copying, but there seems to be a decent amount of evidence. I personally have not done any research into it, but I did want to point it out. So this one is following the same main character as the last one, Millie. There are some events that take place at the end of book one and book two is following that, but not like super directly. She is in a, another situation. She is the housemaid for 
somebody else and she finds herself just like getting weird vibes at the house i don't have a physical copy of this so i don't really know what is in the synopsis at the very beginning she's working for this one family and ends up losing her job because of something ridiculous and then she places an ad like saying here's what i can do you can contact me if you're interested so she gets somebody she's like hired immediately and that's the guy that she's getting weird vibes from the wife is like locked in her room because not locked locked but she's sick and she, millie is told to not bother her but things just feel weird i do think that freedom mcfadden's writing is very readable i am flying through it it's keeping my attention the whole time even though a lot isn't happening i don't think it's anything groundbreaking and while i'm reading it i'm having a good time but i'm not thinking about it at any other moment so i do think it's an interesting one but i don't really have much to say about it i wouldn't have read it if it wasn't for this video probably i don't know if that's a good or a bad thing that i'm reading it now but i also think it's really interesting that this one i know sequels are super popular but I don't think that the last one that won the year it came out last year so it's interesting that it got so many votes and beat out a lot of other <laughs> extremely popular authors I'm excited to get back into reading this one though I'm sure there's gonna be a twist coming like in the first one and I hope it's not too similar I have made it 60% into the housemaid's secret I decided to stop now because it's 60% in and we just got to part two so in part one, we are following Millie as the main character. And then at the end of part one, there's this big reveal that happens and it changes how we think about everything. It is very formulaic to the first one. I feel like this is the exact moment that there was a switch in like everything you knew from the first 60% in the first one and this one. I liked the first part. I thought it was interesting and kept my attention, but... I am nervous about how it's gonna go from here. I can't tell you why, but it does shift to a different character's perspective. So we are learning some other stuff, but it feels very similar to the first one. Honestly, that's all I can say. Up until this point, I've been really enjoying it. It's still very readable, but not original. Like it's feeling like three and a half stars, which is good, but I'm scared moving forward. Super quick update. I am now at like 80%. So I got through part two and I didn't like this part as much. It really feels like the first book again to me. And like there are a lot of comments in this one that really bothered me. I guess it was an interesting addition to the book but like it really wasn't i don't really like the character we were spending time with and like you're not supposed to but it was just like really annoying for me to read i have looked and part three switches back to millie so i'm hoping i like it a lot more i finished the housemaid's secret and this one was just okay for me i think it was too similar to the first book in the series i think that it's too formulaic like i don't want to know that at a certain point there's going to be this big shift and then we will get more information than what we had before. Well, that sounds like a weird complaint, but <laughs> I'm trying to be vague so you don't know what actually happened. The direction that it went in was a little annoying to me. And then we had some stuff going on that I just didn't want. It was okay. It was fine. I'm giving it three stars. I think I gave the first one four stars. I do think that Frieda McFadden's writing is very bingeable. There's just something about it that made me want to keep reading even when I wasn't super interested in the plot and I feel like I mean that's really great but here's the thing does she plagiarize her books? I don't know but there's a lot of um, similarities in a lot of her books apparently. I don't know. I don't know but that's just something to be aware of. I would never have voted for this as the winner of all of the best mystery and thriller books. Of 2023 but it is what it is i guess i'm glad i read it because i would not have picked it up if it wasn't for this video but if this series continues i definitely am not going to because i'm just not invested in it hello i'm at my parents house so that's why the lighting is weird if you hear a bell ringing my parents dog is ringing the bell to go outside even though he was just out there like he doesn't need to go so on my way here i got a third into happy place by emily henry i've actually already read all of emily henry's adult romance books even though i don't typically read romance i really loved people we met on vacation i liked beach read and i thought book lovers felt sir like general fiction like it was fine but it wasn't like enough romance for me in a romance book anyway this one we are following our main character i don't remember her name i can only think of the one from the previous book 
Anyway, we were following her and his name is Wynn and they met in college and like immediately they kind of fell for each other but they were fighting it for a while and they became really close friends and then they eventually started dating. So they got engaged and are not together anymore. They were dating long distance and then he broke up with her and now they are invited to their yearly friend trip that they do and they haven't told anybody yet so they have to pretend like they're still together because if they tell them now they will ruin the wedding that's going to happen. That was a surprise. So far I'm enjoying it. I'm definitely liking it more than book lovers. The romance feels like it is the center of the story. We don't know exactly how they got together and we don't know exactly what led to them breaking up at this point. It seems like it was distance and maybe some different wants in life but Obviously, they're going to get back together. They're fake dating. Kind of friends to lovers, kind of enemies to lovers at this point because she is, like, very upset that he broke up with her. Um, she's a doctor. He does, like, woodworking in Montana. But overall, I'm having a good time with it. I'm glad that this is a romance-focused book, unlike book lovers. I am enjoying the couple, but I'm not, like, feeling any sort of way about it. It's feeling like three and a half to four stars at this point, which I feel like is pretty solid for a romance for me. Hopefully I'll be able to get some reading done while I'm at my parents' house. This is one that I would have picked up eventually, but I had no intentions anytime soon. I'm going to go because Bowser's just sitting right beside this panting. I have made it... I don't even remember. <laughs> I'm listening to the audiobook. I was listening to this on my drive to and from my parents' house um, when I went for Christmas, but I'm around two-thirds in, and I am really liking this. This is feeling like it'll be my second favorite from Emily Henry. I'm liking the relationship between the two, but I'm not obsessed with them, and I think it's because, like, there's this mystery element in here where we don't know really why they broke up. Like, we're learning bits and pieces, but clearly there was something else going on um and it's just like i don't know i feel weird not feel weird i don't know why i said that <laughs> but it just feels a little weird and i can't put my finger on why um i really like their friendship group and i think that's what's driving the story for me we are getting their trip now and then in the past whenever they were getting to know each other and forming a relationship and everything they're very supportive of each other they work well together they have some good banter but like not knowing why they broke up i think is really bothering me because i can't really get invested because like what if it's something that like i'm like well why would you get back together if someone broke up with you over that so i think that's my main issue because i do like them together i do think it's interesting that they're making such a big deal about this like being their last trip and all this stuff like they're acting like they're not going to be friends anymore like their whole friend group um but generally i am having a good time it's feeling like four stars which i'm very happy about i am going to the barnes and noble sale now so between going there and back and maybe a little bit of time when i get home i will be able to finish this today which i'm really excited about once this comes out in paperback i'll probably get a copy because i already have book lovers and people we meet in, on vacation in paperback so i don't want just one hardcover but i am having a really good time with this i'm invested it is keeping me interested i feel like the romance is a good portion of the book but i also really like the friendship group so so far so good i'm excited to finish i think i'm gonna give this one four stars i really liked it I liked the main characters and I liked their friendship group and I can kind of relate to like this kind of being about learning how to communicate with people uh is <laughs> some of the stuff that both of the main characters were going through were really relatable for me um I did like their romance but like pretty much all of Emily Henry's books I feel like the main focus is not specifically the romance and I do think that if we would have learned the conflict and the reason they broke up earlier i would have liked it more because i think the ending felt a little bit abrupt for me i think that's my main issue i think if we would have learned what led to them not being together a little bit earlier on i would have enjoyed it more because i feel like we learned everything and they were like okay cool we're together and then it ended and they were like kind of together throughout the book and then we also got the flashbacks to the when they were together but i wanted to see them kind of implementing everything they had learned and moving forward within the book but i did really enjoy it i probably will get a copy of this for my shelves at some point but i'm really glad i read this i wasn't prioritizing it i really loved people we meet on vacation but other than that i haven't found like a huge win from Emily Henry. I did enjoy this. I like Emily Henry's characters. I liked the discussions in here and I related to a lot of them. But I think for romance books to get five stars for me, they have to really 
be focused more on the romance. This is a win for sure. I'm glad I read it. I wouldn't have read it anytime soon. I'm really glad I enjoyed this one. It's pretty weird that I have already read the Romanticy winner. If it was anything else other than Fourth Wing, I would not have read it already. But Fourth Wing is a school military academy for dragon riders. We are following our main character, Violet, who is forced into the school by her mother. She kind of expected to do one thing her whole life and because of circumstances ended up in this situation. She is not equipped for it. Everybody else that is there has been training for this for their whole lives and she is trying to play catch up. I ended up surprisingly really loving this one. I gave it four and a half stars when I read it. It was very addictive. My main issue with this is there were some times where the writing took me out of the story, but I found this so addictive and easy to get through and I really, really had a great time with it. It's also hilarious to me that I've already read the fantasy pick. So Hellbent I read back in May. I had already read Ninth House before this year and I thought this one was just okay. So the plot of this goes off of the first one and there's a character who disappears in the first one and they're trying to get them back in the second one. Hell is part of this as told by the title. I think that this one felt way too repetitive and kind of boring for me even though things are happening the whole time. I just couldn't get invested in the story and I'm not sure why. I liked Ninth House significantly more than this one. I think I gave it four and a half stars. This one I gave three stars. So I will try the next one in the series and if I don't like it then I won't continue. This is a darker urban fantasy which is why I had read it already and I personally was disappointed in this one but I have seen some people really loving it. Which which is very apparent by the fact that this won. <laughs> So I've started in the lives of puppets and I just got to part two, which is chapter 13 and page 177. This is my third TJ Klune. I loved the house in the Cerulean Sea and I enjoyed Under the Whispering Door, but it wasn't a favorite for me. His books aren't like my vibe, but because I loved the house in the Cerulean Sea, I keep trying his books. I wasn't really planning on reading this one. Michelle told me that she wasn't sure if I was going to like it and so far she's kind of correct. I am finding myself really bored. So this is a Pinocchio retelling. We are deep into the heart of a peculiar forest following a family assembled from spare parts. So there's this house that is built into the branches of the trees and these robots live together. The fatherly inventor android Giovanni and a pleasantly sadistic nurse machine in a small vacuum desperate for love and attention. And then Victor who is a human also lives there. At the very beginning, we see how he comes to be there. And then one day, Victor and Nurse Ratched and Rambo the vacuum <laughs> go scavenging in the like salvage lot and they find an unfamiliar android labeled Hap, H-A-P. And they decide to take him and repair him. The synopsis says that they learn about Hap's past, but it was like a big reveal in the book. So it's interesting that it's in the synopsis. And then Hap accidentally alerts these like people that are looking for them to where they are and they're no longer safe. Giovanni is captured and taken back to his old laboratory and then they are trying to go rescue him. I think it might be the narrator, which also did Cerulean Sea and I really liked it in that one. But I'm not loving the narrator for the audiobook. It makes it feel kind of silly in a way and certain things are silly. Like there is some humor in here but for some reason it's not really working for me. I think it's okay but honestly this isn't one that I feel like I need to continue. I am going to but I'm not invested in any way. It's feeling like my least favorite. Um, Michelle said the ending was good, but it gets repetitive until then. And I already wasn't loving the beginning. So I am a little scared, but the first part is like 40%. So I'm hoping that it picks up a little bit and we don't just watch them traveling. I am scared because I don't think I really love watching people like travel and go on journeys. It's okay. It does feel like a TJ Klune book, but it's just not my favorite. I don't think it's bad, but it's just very, very far 
off of what I usually read. And it feels weird for this to be in sci-fi. Like it is, but it just, I don't know. I don't read a lot of sci-fi, but I do really like a decent amount of it. So it's interesting to see this as the pick. I've read at least one, maybe two, I have no idea, of the other nominees, but I'm not surprised this one because of how popular TJ Klune is in general. So I've made it halfway into In the Lives of Puppets, and I'm not gonna continue this. I was really trying to push to the end, but the direction it is starting to go in, I'm really not interested in. There is never any point where I was loving this. The characters, for some reason, just were not working for me. I don't think it's bad, but for some reason, I just, like, didn't have a good time with it. And they are starting to, like, go on this journey, and I think that books where people are traveling are so boring. And I just, I was talking to Michelle, and she said that if I didn't like the beginning, and I'm not liking it now that I'm not gonna like it the whole way through. So I am just not going to continue. I think that it really feels like a TJ Klune book and like I generally like his writing I guess but this one was just I don't know for some reason the characters just weren't working for me. I didn't have any issues with like anything that was discussed but yeah not my favorite thing. I tried really hard <laughs> but halfway through is a fair shot. I'm so sorry to anybody that loves this. I don't think it's bad. It's just not a book for me even though other books of his are. So I am kind of sad about this one because I've enjoyed other books from him but like if I'm not having a good time I'm not gonna keep reading it and it's okay to not like everything so moving on. Holly by Stephen King. I read this in a video where I read all of the horror nominees. This one was a DNF for me. This is loosely part of a series that I absolutely hate by Stephen King. Well, I've only read the first one, but it's one of my least favorite books I've ever read. This one was giving me too many flashbacks of that and also reminded me too much of it, which is like the style of book it is. This really is a crime book. I know obviously so many people voted for it. More people voted for it than people that have marked it as read on Goodreads but this one was just not for me. Stephen King is very hit or miss for me. Like he's written one of my all-time favorite books and one of my least favorite books ever. So since I knew pretty early on that this one was not working for me, I did not finish it. We are following Holly and she runs this agency that was set up in the Mr. Mercedes trilogy and it's just like a crime solving thing. Somebody calls in for that and then there's also like some family stuff and I just truly... <laughs> could not read this book. I, I couldn't finish this, so not a favorite for me. I am currently in the process of organizing my shelves, so that has been fun, and I'm listening to Divine Rivals. I'm 28% and I just got to part two, and we are following our main character, Iris, and also Kit. We are mostly getting Iris's perspective, but we are getting Kit's every once in a while, and they are living in this, like, war time but the war is between gods but like there are people that are fighting so her brother volunteers to go fight in this war and she writes him letters and like puts it under her wardrobe i believe and they magically are being sent to her rival at her newspaper company they are both kind of fighting for the same promotion and they don't really like each other so she's sending the letters he finds out that it is her but she doesn't know that they're going to him she's just like sending them to her brother because she doesn't have an actual address and just like putting them under her wardrobe and then she gets a letter back saying like i'm not forest with her brother i don't really have anything to say about part one it's been set up of this like historical feeling world and her relationship with her mom and her brother and Kit and like there's a little bit of him and his family dynamics. I truly have no thoughts in my brain at this point. I'm not disliking it but I would not want a whole book that is feeling like this. Monica said it does start to pick up now so I'm interested to see how that goes. I'm looking forward to some of the things that I anticipate happening but so far too historical. I need more fantasy other than the letters magically going back and forth between the two, but I do know that's going to happen. So, so far, I guess so good, but also, I don't know. <laughs> I am 68% into Divine Rivals. <laughs> I'm so bored. <laughs> so this is definitely a historical romance. There are a few fantasy elements in here, but I feel like there's not enough detail about any of them that I'm just like not, 
I don't know. I don't know. I also think that this is a book that is for somebody who pictures things when they read or like really wants to think about the setting and the descriptions and all of that stuff. That is not me. I visualize nothing when I read. I'm like looking at words. I know I'm looking at words. Nothing going on up here. I obviously know what's going on, but like I don't have the movie playing in my head. So whenever everything is described, I don't care. Like I don't need all of these little details for me as a reader. So for me, this is not working, but for people that like that kind of stuff, like I feel like obviously it would work really well. I just think that for me to be more invested in it on top of like the writing maybe not working for me is that I need more of the plot outside of their romance. I think they're fine, but like also the whole situation is kind of annoying to me. Like she doesn't know she's writing letters to him, but he knows he's writing letters to her. And I feel like it takes away some of the tension for me because I'm like, well, if he knows, then like he should just say something and then this should not be happening. Like, mm, it really bothers me. And I know it's a you've got mail situation. Michelle told me that. I haven't seen that, but like, I don't care. I don't like it. I feel like there's like no sort of suspense with it other than like, oh, well, when is she gonna find out and how is she gonna react, which is not the kind of suspense that I want to be feeling. I'm not really enjoying this that much. I don't think it's like specifically bad, it's just for my taste, it's not, not it. And I do read some romance and I read the tiniest amount of fantasy. I think for me, like a fantasy romance needs to probably be a little more focused on the fantasy part because the romance is not carrying the story for me and I'm I'm nervous <laughs> about the rest of this book. I <laughs> I finished Divine Rivals and I <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna give this one two stars. I think that for me this was incredibly boring which is my main complaint. It very much felt like a historical fiction book which like it partially is and that's fine but I didn't really like it. I did not feel any sort of chemistry between the two main characters. I was actually kind of annoyed by them. Not specifically individually but as a couple I was just like I don't get this and then there's some very very insta love type of situations in here and like yes they did know each other for more than just like the amount of time we see them together but not in the way that you need for the things that happened to happen well not need but like <laughs> For my personal taste. I will not be continuing with this series which is sucky for me because I bought the second book before I started this one because I like the Barnes and Noble edition so now I own that and have to get rid of it. So that's on me <laughs> but I truly just like didn't care about anything that was happening. I thought it was really boring. I didn't like the relationship. There were certain aspects to the fantasy in here that I thought were decent but they were not a large part of the book and I needed more from that to be able to enjoy something like this. This did not go well. I thought that with everybody loving this it would be one of the situations where even though it's out of my comfort zone I would also love it. I was wrong but I am glad that I read it. One, so that I know what the hype is about and two, because I'm still learning my fantasy I used to read some fantasy as a kid and then have not read any for a while other than genre blends with horror and thriller. Well, every once in a while. I don't know, like Middle Game by Sean McGuire. Love that. So I'm not really sure where to move on with me trying to read fantasy books. Anyway, that was a tangent. Two stars. Definitely not a favorite for me, but I'm so glad I read it. <laughs> Sorry, you can hear car noises, but it's cold and I'm not turning my car off. I am between 35 and 40% into Check and Mate, and I just love Allie Hazelwood. Well, not her novellas, but her novels are just so fun for some reason. I end up really loving them. I just really like her writing for some reason. They're funny, they're cute, and I'm having a good time. 
So we are following our main character. I don't remember her name because when do I ever? And she used to be really good at chess. She played it with her dad and something happened with her dad. We don't really know what that is, but he's not in the picture anymore and she has quit. And then she ends up doing this chess tournament for her friend who's about to leave for college. This is YA, by the way. And she ends up winning and like running away. And then there's this other like really famous chess guy and they end up meeting and they're just like, it's very fun. Um, she has ended up in this like chess fellowship because she needs money. Um, her home situation is not ideal. So it's really interesting with that. And I don't know, generally romance books just like don't keep my attention when the romance is not the main plot. But for some reason, Allie Hazelwood is just so good at it. And I'm truly having the best time with it. Like I've been in my parents' house and I'm like hiding the fact that I'm like giggling at this book. <laughs> so very much having a good time with it. I cannot wait to continue. I am feeling very good vibes with this one. This is the angle, obviously. Um, So I have been driving and I am now 70% into check and mate. My glasses are so dirty, so just ignore me. My windshield is also so dirty. It's snowing and I haven't driven in the snow in a while. So that's not been fun, but I am having the best time with Check and Mate. So this is YA and our main character is 18 and the love interest is 20. And I really like both of the characters. And most of this book is just playing chess. That's it. <laughs> but for some reason I'm so invested and I don't know why because it's just like a contemporary story. Um, I do like our main characters and I really like the banter between them. And I really like the discussions that are in here with like feeling like certain things are your fault and the trauma that comes from that, especially with um, parents and grandparents and like parental figures and stuff um, and how kids can very easily take on kind of burdens that are not their own to really take on but sometimes they have to because of the situation or they feel like they need to and it's a bit relatable <laughs> not to this extent but relatable and there's just funny moments and there's cute moments and there's been a lot of um, discussion about I mean how women are treated in general but especially in the chess world which I know nothing about. I've never played chess ever. I don't even know what all the pieces are called probably, but like it's been so interesting and I don't know why, but I'm very invested. Like truly I'm having a good time and it just has to be. Allie Hazelwood has like magic abilities because generally, sorry, my glasses, I can't tell if, there's, if it's scratched or just really disgusting, but like I should not care about this. I don't care about chess. I generally don't love romance books where so much of the book is focused on other things and that's what's happening in here because like they're not even together like the press says they are and they have to like fight their attraction it was very cute and i'm i'm really like i'm having a really good time like possibly five stars which is not surprising because i think my all-time favorite romance book is the love hypothesis which is not original but i truly do not care and i'm so glad to be ending this video on such a win i know i'm not done but like it's a good one. And this makes me really excited to go back and read Love Theoretically because I haven't read that one yet. I don't know why I've been putting it off, but I'm excited for that. So I'm super excited to finish this. Hopefully I can finish it before I finish my drive. I didn't look at how much I have left in the audiobook. I'm very pleasantly, uh, not surprised, kind of surprised. YA doesn't usually work for me. Romance doesn't usually work for me, but it's Allie Hazelwood. So I can't wait to finish. So check and mate. I finished this on my drive home and I think I am going to give this one five stars. I just think that you have to be really good at what you do to make me like a YA romance about chess. The thing is, this one does have a romance in it, but I do feel like the focus of this book is her family dynamics and everything that is going on with her mom and feeling like she needs to take care of her sisters and everything with that. And like generally those are not things that I want to read. I don't really want to read about real life. <laughs> And I want my romance books to be very heavily focused on the romance. And I really liked their romance in here. And like, why was I so into the chess stuff? Like, I don't, I don't know. But this one very much worked for me. It is not the kind of book that I read. I Yes, I do read Allie Hazelwood books. But like, this kind of story is just not something I ever gravitate towards. And a lot of times when I do read them, I don't like them. Allie Hazelwood just has something about her writing that makes it so 
easy to read and so interesting even when it's topics that I'm not generally interested in at all. I will say that I do have a range of five star books and this one is not like an all-time favorite five star. I know that varies from person to person but I'm really really glad that I got to this one. It's one that I would have read eventually but I was not prioritizing it at all and I truly just had a really good time with it. I have made my way through the 10 winners of the fiction categories for the Goodreads Choice Awards. This was a very interesting experience for me. I had some DNFs in this stack. Holly is just not a book for me. I was finding Wayward so boring and I could not focus on it and in the lives of puppets I also was finding really boring and the direction it was going in was something I knew I would not continue enjoying. So none of these worked for me. The other one that did not work for me was Divine Rivals. This very much felt like historical fiction romance with a little bit of fantasy in it. I was just terribly bored the whole time. I didn't connect to any of the characters and I wanted more of the plot and the world building but we were not getting that and I know spoilers for the second one and I'm still not interested in anything that happened so that's kind of disappointing because of how popular this one is but it is what it is. I am glad that I tried it. Two that were just okay for me. The Housemaid's Secret by Freda McFadden. I have also obviously read the first one, The Housemaid, and I did enjoy the first one more. I think the second one was too similar in a lot of ways to it. And there's a shift that happens at one point and I didn't like it nearly as much after that. And then Hellbent was just okay for me. There were parts that I did like, but I think this one was too long and repetitive. and didn't keep my attention. And then the four that I really liked are all kind of really surprising to me. Yellow Face, I didn't know if I really planned on reading it. Literary fiction kinds of books like this really scare me, but it was such a good surprise. I really, really liked that one. I just wish the ending was a little different. Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. Really shocked me that I loved it this much, but this one is just very addictive and a fun time. Happy Place by Emily Henry. I was very pleasantly surprised by this one as well. I have loved from her in the past and then also thought that some were just like okay but this one is one that i really ended up enjoying and probably wouldn't have picked up for a while if it wasn't for this video and then check and mate i kind of expected to like it and also not like it but with it being ya romance i was scared but it worked so well for me let me know if you've read any of these and if you think they should have won their categories and i'd also be interested in knowing what you voted for for all of these different categories since i primarily read horror and thriller i would not and did not vote for either of the two that won. And I didn't love either of the winners either. So that kind of sucks for me. If you like this and haven't watched my other two Goodreads videos, there's one where I read three nominees out of my comfort zone. And then the one where I read all 20 of the horror nominees. If you've made it to the end and want to leave me an emoji to say you were here, you can leave me a chess emoji for check and me. If you're looking to find me in other places, everything is linked in the description, including my bookstagram, my storygraph, and my Patreon. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. And I hope to see you in my next one. Bye.